This is the oldest dwarf garden in Europe. Two months traveling on the road, our home is where the traffic flows. We'll bring you everywhere we go and sleep in a freezing cold van because we're a little bit crazy, but you'll see that it's worth it. Welcome to Luxembourg. We've come here for a very special reason and parked right there in the lot behind me. We received a message from one of our longtime patrons that he lived in Luxembourg and was wondering if we were gonna come here. It was not originally on our destination list, but we never give up a chance to see a friend. So we came here and we're going to meet up with DJ Travitron later this afternoon. to see this old town down here and then your eye travels up to this old old wall and behind that wall is a super modern city Fun fact about lawn flamingos, they were invented in Baltimore City by the Huns, the Balmer Huns, with the big beehive hair, yes. really cool thing about these old European cities is they used to be kingdoms and kingdoms had palaces and palaces today have their guards outside. It's like Marching in around. London. Yes. <laughs> Except they didn't have the tall fuzzy hats. No, no fuzzy hats. Luxembourg turned out to be a really cool stopover. We were only there for one day as we are in most places but we saw as much as we could and historically it's just a fascinating city it's tiny and all of Luxembourg is actually a country which we didn't know um, Luxembourg there's there's Luxembourg country right off of France and then there's Luxembourg City within it which is the capital of Luxembourg country yes exactly <laughs> there are two languages spoken here actually and they are French and Luxembourgish which is a language that exists, but it played really important roles in World War II. It was founded in 963. It's withstood invasions by all kinds of people. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting city and I'm really glad we stopped here. It was not originally our plan to stop here at all, but one of our patrons contacted us and said he lived here and asked, are you going to be stopping anywhere near here? And we thought, well, it's kind of on the way, so we might
might as well. And uh, we just had a really great time meeting him. And we thank him very much for the opportunity and idea to come here because it's really awesome. But our next stop is Baden-Baden, which is a city that our friend Dylan from back home told us about. And we're really excited to check it out. We have arrived in Baden-Baden. We are going down here to the footpath. We found a parking spot for free that's going to be nice and quiet and dark at night, which we really need. And we are headed into town to find internet. The sun has come out! Finally! In, we haven't seen it in days and days, not since Amsterdam. We're going into the town of Baden-Baden right now. We parked just outside. And the first thing we're doing is super exciting. And by the way, Baden-Baden means bath bath. And <laughs> I think German. So if that gives you a clue as to what we're doing, it should. <laughs> and if you need another clue as to what we're doing, look at my hair. <laughs> yes, it's almost like if I need a bath. <laughs> Here comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. Let's go inside for the whole day. <laughs> The first thing we're going to do is get a proper breakfast because we don't want to be in the baths and the steam rooms and everything and hungry. <laughs> So this bathhouse is a traditional Irish Roman bathhouse. It has 17 rooms that you go through and it was built in the 1800s. So it's over a hundred years old and it's a very intense tradition in Europe. The thing about these baths is, like I said, they are traditional and when I say that, well, they're very traditional and we will not be wearing clothes, neither will anybody else in there. Therefore, we cannot bring you with us. Oh. oh so amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> tell you more about it later after we eat. <laughs> so now we are on the search for pizza. Because Maddie's craving pizza. So we obviously couldn't take you with us into the baths because of all the nudity. But you can see from the outside here, that urn is where we soaked to begin with and uh, that urn is where we had our soaping and scrubbing. <laughs> but seriously, it was an incredible experience. You went to 17 stations and you started out in a locker room where you just disrobed and you got like a little towel thing. And then you went in and started with the saunas. And oh man, those saunas were hot. And then you go in and we got like a rough kind of brush scrub down to get all our dead skin off. And then we took showers and there was steam rooms and just a plethora of pools to choose from. You go from a cold pool to a hot pool to a warm pool with jets and so on. And you could just kind of like float along from pool to pool and be there with no time restrictions. And then you go in and you're given a new towel and you get creamed you cream your body up with body cream lotion and then they take you into this room of beds and they just tuck you into a little cocoon of happiness and you lie there for as long as you want and then you go in and you have tea it was amazing
Well, Baden Baden was wonderful, but it's time for us to move on. Now, coronavirus is taking hold of Europe right now, so we are changing our plans completely to avoid all large cities. So, with that, since coronavirus is a thing, um, that actually concludes our German experience. We were going to be going to Munich as well, but we think it's a good idea to avoid large crowded spaces in big cities. So we're actually going to head to Austria now, skipping Vienna, unfortunately, for the same reason, but we're going to go hear the sounds of music. get dressed. I'm going as fast as I can. Now, where are we going today? We'll start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. So what she's getting at is a Sound of Music tour. So we're in Austria. We're in Salzburg. Yep. Yeah, I said it right. We're in Salzburg and our tour starts like uh, now pretty much but great thing being in a van we parked and right over there is where we pick up our tour Behind me is the 16 going on 17 gazebo uh, where Liesl and that awful boy danced <laughs> in the movie. Um, they, have, they have moved it from its original location because it was set in a park and the people here didn't know about the movie and so they didn't understand why so many people were coming to this gazebo. So they didn't want so much traffic and they moved the gazebo to this park here. So this is the church that they used for the interior of the wedding scene when Maria and Captain Von Trapp get married. They use the exterior of the church in Salzburg, but here is where they actually filmed it. solve a problem like Maria. <laughs> she came up and then she walked up these stairs. Well, we had to have our crisp apple strudel. Tonight, maybe we'll have schnitzel with noodles. <laughs> it wasn't like no, that could not. <laughs> so would The 
these steps look so much smaller in real life, but they are the ones where during uh, the Do Re Mi song, the kids were jumping up and down on the different steps. Each step was a different note. <laughs> this is the oldest dwarf garden in Europe. Because dwarf gardens are apparently a thing. So in the 1600s, this garden was made. And apparently in the early 1800s, they were all sold off at auction. And then early 19th, 20th century, well, pretty recently, like within the past couple hundred years, they've uh, made an effort and they've retrieved almost all of the original 28. As many as they could. <laughs> yes, because someone didn't want to let go of their dwarf for their own dwarf garden. Because dwarf gardens. Look at this guy. <laughs> That, that is, that is a thing. Which is your favorite? It's difficult to say, they're all so... Unique? I was going to say something else, but yes. Oh, I like this guy, he's my favorite. He's just chilling, he's a farmer, he knows what's up, looking into the distance, gazing on his future. Yeah, he's cool. We're cool. This is my favorite because he has his tongue out. <laughs> All joking aside, they are actually quite wonderful. And I wonder how they would uh, get along in the States because people might be offended by them, but I think they're, I think they're fantastic and I love their history. Okay, so exact dates. This garden was built in 1695. It had 28 dwarfs at the time. They were all sold off at auction in 1811. And it says in the early 20th century, they made an effort to recover them and they've recovered most of them. So there we are, <laughs> the dwarf garden. took our own little tour through the old section of Salzburg. Now we're headed back to a couple places on the tour that we didn't stop, but we really wanted to. So we're going to the house that was used as the facade of the Von Trapp family house. hysteria has arrived <laughs> it's got us kind of stuck in Austria right now so all plans be damned yep. we're going up into the mountains 
We're going to hide like hermits. I am so excited to sleep up here because there's gonna be beautiful stars and we got snow-topped mountains. Snow-capped mountains even. Snow-capped? <laughs> What's the difference between snow-topped and snow-capped? Snow-topped isn't the thing. Snow-capped mountains. So now we're gonna see about finding some dinner. Don't know here. if these places are open or not. It's coronavirus. <laughs> has come to descend the mountain. So we came up here when coronavirus hysteria was starting to hit. It's so beautiful. It is so still and the reflections are perfect. So we're just making a little fire and then we're gonna grill our steaks. Which means we don't have the luxury of coming back to a warm home. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.